Hello and welcome. This magnificent steed is a Schwinn Wayfarer. Sadly, the poor old thing has seen better days. It was clearly left outside for an extended period of time, resulting in a lot of rust and weathering. According to an online forum that I found, the date line on the sticker on the bottom bracket shows what year the bike was made. In this instance, it's the first three digits following FSD, in this case 011, indicating 2011. So, this is a 2011 model. I bought this bike with a plan, and that plan is to turn it into food. But first, let's take a look at the bike. I bought it for $50 from a consignment shop, and the Schwinn Wayfarer is still available new, and I've seen it going for as low as $338 on Amazon to $398 on eBay, and on the Schwinn website it was $369, so, you know, take your pick. Now, obviously, this bike needs work. It needs a lot of work. But it's nothing that I haven't done before, and most of it's fairly basic. Luckily, I have a good starting point. It has a steel frame and fork with a 21 inch long seat tube and a 16 inch reach. That would make it more or less a medium, maybe bordering on large, depending upon your definitions. The bike comes with 700C unbranded single wall alloy wheels. At least they appear from outside to be single wall. I'll find out more about that when I get into the teardown. Both front and rear have Yongling hubs, and the front is a quick release axle, whereas the rear is a bolt on. And you know, Schwinn is still doing that. Uh, they're doing it with, at the very least, the AL Comp. Anyway, it has 700C by 35mm Schwinn tires, which appear to be in decent shape. I couldn't find any signs of obvious weathering, you know, cracking and checking and so forth. And the tubes are still holding air after 24 hours, so that's a good sign. It has cast alloy unbranded V-brakes front and rear. Fairly hefty and a lot better than the cheap stamped steel versions that come on a lot of bikes. It has steel handlebars. Now, I'm not entirely certain, but I think they might be painted. I'll find out when I do the cleaning and the polishing and whatnot. I find it somewhat interesting that the shape of these handlebars is very similar to the shape on my 1951 Schwinn Traveler. I guess, you know, you find something you like, you don't change it. Whatever. It has an alloy single bolt Kalen quill stem. Nothing fancy, but it gets the job done. It has alloy brake levers, both the housing and lever assemblies themselves. And it's got some pretty comfortable full leather grips with the decorative stitching. It also has a SRAM twist grip shifter for its 1x7 drivetrain. Moving a little bit further down, it has a one-piece crank set with a really badly frozen rusted chain. In fact, I'm probably going to have to cut that off from the look of it. The pedals are kind of an odd looking H shape, but they are in good condition, so I'm not going to fiddle with them. Moving a little bit further back, I cannot tell you what brand that rusty 7-speed freewheel is, and, well, I'm not really hopeful that I can save it. Luckily, I think I've got a spare in my parts boxes. The rear derailleur is a Shimano SIS bolt-on. I'm not certain what the exact model is. If it's imprinted, it's on the rear of the unit. It does look cheap kind of like the current RD310s, I think they're called, 
otherwise known as the Shimano flat face rear derailleurs with the plastic bodies. Well, I'm pretty sure I've got a better one in my spare parts. At the very least, I think I can come up with a tourney with a metal body. Moving back towards the crank set just a little bit, there's like one third of the chain guard left on the bike. I've no idea what happened to it. Neither did the consignment seller. Well, I think I can pick up something relatively inexpensive on eBay and paint it to match. So that doesn't worry me a great deal. The saddle is a Schwinn comfort saddle with dual springs. And yeah, those springs do need some polishing. And speaking of which, Wayfarers come with a really sturdy rack. And I have test polished this one with aluminum foil with, you know, not bad initial results. I also test polished the very, and I do mean very rusty rear fender, again with aluminum foil. I am cautiously optimistic that I can get the rack and the rear fender looking presentable using a real polishing routine, not just the aluminum foil, and maybe some strategically applied metal restorer liquid. So I think I can get it looking good, if not perfect, and I will settle for that. So I clearly have a to-do list with this bike. Clean and polish. Maybe I should put that on the list twice. I want to repack the headset bearings just on general principle. Definitely need new inner and outer cables. Clearly needs a new freewheel. I'm going to put on a better derailleur, a new chain, and a new chain guard along with some touch-up paint here and there. So, I said earlier that I was going to turn this bike into food. Well, how am I going to do that? Pretty simple. After I clean it up and so forth, I am going to sell it. I will then donate all the money from the sale to the Tiger Food Pantry. This is a food pantry that's run by students at the Gardner Area High School in Gardner, Maine. And I know that my efforts and the money will be going to a good cause, which, candidly, makes me feel good. And whatever good my meager talents can provide, I am blessed to share. There's a link below left to a playlist on some other bikes I've restored, and below right to something else I think you'll enjoy. And as always, thank you for watching. I really do appreciate that. Goodbye and have a great day.